Welcome to Holly Terminator X Training Part 21. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our knock control feature. Our knock control allows us to take a look at a knock sensor's reading when the engine's operating in all conditions. We want to make sure that the engine's not going to knock. Knock can damage the engine. It's going to be a rapid rise in our cylinder pressure, which can damage the pistons, the connecting rods, the head gasket, the cylinder walls, the connecting rod bearings, even the crankshaft. We want to avoid getting the engine into knock conditions. So we're going to be taking a look at how to work with knock control readings, how to implement that to allow the Holly to reduce our spark timing, to reduce our cylinder pressure, which will keep the engine in check when we have knock present. There's going to be a lot to discover and talk about in this video. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our knock control feature that we have in our Terminator X software. Our knock control is going to be a vital part of our calibration process. We can use it to guide us in tuning our spark timing table. We also can use it for more long-term operations. So after we've already calibrated the spark timing table, we're running in racing conditions. If we start to get into a situation where maybe our intake manifold temperature gets too warm and we start to have knock, it can save our engine. Likewise, if we have too much load, if we increase the load that we've tuned on a chassis dyno or on the road, let's say we build a little bit much, too much boost pressure, if it starts to knock, it can start to reduce our timing and reduce our cylinder pressure and save our engine. So the knock control can be looked at in more of a calibration technique or a method that we can use to tune our spark timing out and or in that long-term operation to save the motor as a fail-safe protection feature. So either way, we want to learn how to work with our knock sensors and how to calibrate with them correctly. First thing we're going to do here is let's jump into our system ICF, so our system parameters. We're going to go here under ignition parameters, and we're going to find our area here labeled knock sensors. This is where we're going to be starting off our tutorial talking about the variations we have in our knock sensors that we have to work with. Now, first things first, let's talk about knock and what it represents, and then we'll talk about our knock sensors, then move into how to work with those in conjunction with our spark timing table and looking at some data log examples of what knock should look like and shouldn't look like. A lot of things to cover here. So first starting off, let's talk about our knock and what it represents. So going back to the previous video that we looked at in our previous train tutorial of the auto cycle, when we have the engine going through the auto cycle, so we have our intake valve opening, the fuel and air mixture are getting drawn into the combustion chamber into the actual cylinder, piston travels downwards, creates a vacuum effect, it draws in that fuel air mixture, the intake valve closes, piston changes direction when it reaches bottom dead center. It starts to move into the compression stroke where it's compressing the fuel and air mixture. Any given point in the travel of the piston moving upwards is where we're gonna be firing off our spark plug that's gonna be designated from our spark timing table in here. So we have our base spark timing table. We know the values in here are degrees before top dead center and commanded advance. So if it's firing off and telling the spark plug to fire here at 30 degrees before top dead center, it's gonna be firing the spark plug 30 degrees before the piston reaches that point where it's at the TDC between our compression and our power or combustion stroke. So as we're firing off the engine and we're looking here as the piston's traveling upwards, we're gonna find that we fire off the spark plug. That's gonna generate a flame front and a bunch of pressure and temperature within the combustion chamber. Our goal is to try to time that peak pressure from our flame front that's being a uh, combustion process in the engine, timing that between 15 to 20 degrees after top dead center as the piston's moving downwards on that stroke. If we can have our peak pressure timed there, that's gonna give the most mechanical advantage to the piston and rod as it's pushing down onto the crankshaft, which produces the most amount of horsepower and torque production out of the engine. In this situation, we've optimized our spark timing. Now that's always what we shoot for. That's usually not what we can reach, especially on a force induction engine. We have to reduce our cylinder pressure a little bit because as we increase our cylinder pressure, we've talked about this, the combustion temperature will increase. As our combustion temperature increases, we can start to have unstable combustion. And that's where if we have a rapid rise in our temperature, we can have a rapid rise in our pressure. We can actually spike our cylinder pressure in an uncontrolled manner, which is what knock is going to represent. If we have too high of a cylinder pressure that's being generated, we can damage the, the cylinder wall of the actual uh, engine. We can damage the piston. We can damage the rod, the connecting rod bearing. We can damage the crankshaft. We can also damage the head gasket. So all of these things can be uh, affected by having too high of a pressure. So our goal when we're doing our tuning and we're calibrating our main spark timing table out here is to have that sweet spot where we can generate the maximum pressure, generate it, placing that optimized point, 
pushing down on the piston again between. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.